Um, the Lord has given two ordinances to the church for believers to practice until he returns. And one of those is baptism, the, a visible reflection of an internal reality. The other is the Lord's Supper. And this is the time in the service when we will actually be participating in the Lord's Supper. And this is something that we do as a church, and the Lord instructed us to do this as often as, as often as we do it, and he gives us instructions on how to participate in that. And so there's freedom in our church, how often we do this. But at Grace Bible Church, we get to celebrate this every single week, and it's a joy. Um, we invite anyone who is here this morning who has trusted in Christ alone for their salvation to participate with us, whether you go to this church or to another church. Um, But if by your own admission, you have not placed your faith in Christ alone for salvation, uh, you're not following him, then when the men pass the trays in a few minutes in front of you, just go ahead and let it pass. Pass it to the person next to you. This isn't to embarrass you, but this is just a unique time in our service when we, the believers in Christ, get to celebrate and remember what Christ accomplished on the cross by taking a piece of bread and, and drinking from a cup. But we're thrilled you're here. But during this time, we would just ask that you listen and follow along in your copy of the Bible as we read this morning. And with that said, please turn in your Bibles to Mark 10, Mark chapter 10. And to prepare for our celebration of the Lord's Supper today, I want to look briefly at two passages. The first is Mark 10, 38, and then we'll spend the rest of our time in 1 Peter 3. Immediately prior to Mark 38, James and John had asked Jesus, hey, will you let us come sit on your right and your left in glory? Quite a, re- quite a request. And, but before Jesus' glory, something else would come first. So Jesus responded in Mark 10, 38. But Jesus said to them, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized. To be baptized means to be immersed. Jesus had already been immersed in the Jordan River by John the Baptist, so he wasn't talking about a water baptism that he needed to undergo before his glory. What was he referring to? His forthcoming death, where he would be immersed under the judgment of God on behalf of sinners. Before Jesus would sit down in heaven in glory, he would die. So you can go ahead and turn to 1 Peter 3, and while you do so, listen as I read from Luke 12, 50, where Jesus said, But I have a baptism to undergo, and how distressed I am until it is finished. Jesus again spoke of his upcoming death as a baptism or immersion under the judgment of God. Jesus would take upon himself the penalty for the sin of every person who would believe in him. A penalty that we could never absorb, never satisfy, though we had all eternity to do it. And such are the consequences of our sin before a holy God. But Jesus absorbed the full wrath of all of God's justice against sin for those who believe in him. And on the cross, he would be immersed under the flood of his father's wrath and judgment poured out on our sin. So with that background in mind, we look to 1 Peter 3, verse 21. And as you find verse 21, a brief summary of verses 18 to 20 are in order. In verses 18 to 20, we read that Christ suffered for our sins, that those who believe in him would actually be brought near to him. He was then resurrected, and he proclaimed his victory over death. And his, he subjected his angelic enemies who rebelled against him in the time of Noah. But despite all these fascinating details, the critical point in Peter's argument here is that judgment and death for the entire demonically influenced world of Noah's day which was quite literally immersed underwater in God's judgment. He's drawing our attention to that. And remarkably, we see Noah is saved and delivered through judgment and death of the world. Through the judgment and death of the world, he is delivered from that. So now look at verse 21 with that background in mind. Corresponding to that, baptism now saves you. Not the removal of dirt from the flesh, 
but an appeal of a good conscience to God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is at the right hand of God, having gone into heaven after angels and authorities and powers had been subjected to him. When we know that faith alone saves, not water baptism. So what does Peter mean? Notice Peter clarifies that he's not talking about water baptism. He's not talking about going under and out of the water. Continuing in verse 21, not the removal of dirt from the flesh. To avoid any confusion, Peter clarifies that he's not talking about the immersion of believers into the waters of baptism, which is, as we just discussed, is only an outward picture of an inward reality. Peter is actually talking about an inward reality. And another kind of immersion. Look at the first three words of verse 21. Corresponding to that. Peter is drawing a comparison between Noah being delivered through judgment. And this non-water water immersion that he's describing. So what does Peter mean? Well, remember what Jesus meant by baptism. He meant his own death. His immersion under the judgment of God. So let's read verse 21 again, this time kind of skipping the explanation in between, which just clarifies what type of baptism is being referred to. The main clause is, baptism now saves you through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Believers, we are saved by only one means, and that is Jesus' baptism, his immersion under the wrath of God for our sin. In his death, he paid the price of our sin, but Jesus did not remain in the grave. He was victorious over death, and in his resurrection, he also secured new life for us, cleansing us of our sin and cleansing our consciences before him. So believer, remember this morning, Jesus is coming to earth to be immersed under the judgment of the Father on our behalf. So we would be brought to the Father to so he might bear the penalty for our sin. Remember his resurrection, which marked the acceptance of the price that he paid on our behalf, and also the means by which we receive new life through faith. Believers, I'll ask the men to come up now and distribute the elements. You can go ahead and come forward. Uh, please hold on to the bread and the cup when you receive them, and we'll actually take them together in a moment. But as you wait... Thank the Lord for undergoing the baptism that only he could withstand, for drinking the cup that only he could endure. Thank him for the salvation that we have in both his death and through his resurrection. And while you prepare, confess any known sin before him, knowing that its penalty has already been paid and resolve again to walk in the newness of life, which he actually secured for you and through his spirit, which he has given to you. When all the elements are done being distributed, again, I will lead us in taking them together. So hold on to them and go ahead and spend the next few moments just preparing your own heart as we partake of this meal. <laughs> 